Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my September TBR. So the most important part about my September TBR is that it is Becca's Bookopalathon for the entire month, which means that the entirety of my TBR is actually based off of the prompts that I got from Becca's Bookopalathon. So let's just jump right into it, I guess. So my first roll for Becca's Bogoblathon was a 4, which led me to TBR Vet, and for that I decided to pick up The Enchanter Air by Cinda Williams Chima. This is one of the last four books that I have to pick up to have completed reading her entire backlist. This and The Sorcerer Air are... Sorcerer Air? I think The Sorcerer Air are the last two books in this particular series that I have to read, which are not related at all to her Grey Wolf Throne... what is it called? Seven Realms books. Uh, so... I have completed all of the Seven Realms books, I have completed two out of the four of the Shattered Realms books, and they're on my list also, but not for this particular TBR. This one I'm reading The Enchanter Heir. So if you've never heard of the Warrior Heir Chronicles? I don't know if it actually has a name or not. Um, if you've never heard of the Warrior Heir books, they're YA, they're urban fantasy. I've read them when I was in middle school, probably. Um, and at the time, I think there were only three books out, now there's five. I think it's finished, though, officially. But they follow a boy who, I think his name is Will? It's been a long time since I've read the first one. Fortunately, they're pretty easy to pick up if you haven't read them in a while, so I don't have to read the first three again. To understand what's going on in this one, I might just look up a quick synopsis so that I'm not super behind. Um, but you do follow a boy who is living his normal life. Maybe it's Jack. His name might be Jack. But I think there's also a Will. Don't quote me on any of this. Anyway, uh, so he discovers one day that he's uh, kind of an heir to a slightly magical ancient bloodline, I guess you could say, that involves uh, the War of the Roses and pitting factions against one another, using warriors as the avatar, for lack of a better word, to represent each of the houses. And he finds out that he has to compete in this tournament as the warrior heir. <laughs> That's the name of the book. Uh, for this particular house. That's the first book. It gets a lot bigger in scope after that, but that's the general concept of this. It's very YA. It's very 2000s YA. It's really nothing, you know, epic or out of its lane. It's, it's good though. I mean, it's nostalgic for me, so I guess it might not be amazing, but I enjoyed it very much, and that's why I would like to continue reading this series, but since I've been reading it so long, this has been on my TBR for a very long time, hence the reason why it's my TBR bet. For my next prompt, I rolled a 9, which is to read a book published between the years of 2000 and 2019. For that, I chose Saga Volume 3. This is the last one of the Saga Volumes that I own that I need to read. Obviously, I have a long way to catch up on the full series as a whole, but this was published in like 2014 or something, so it's definitely within that range, and I've enjoyed the two Saga volumes that I've read so far. I can't wait to finally move on in the series. I really don't know what's been holding me up because it's not like they're very slow reads, obviously. I mean, they're, they're not very long, clearly, and uh, that's another reason why I ended up picking this because I'm struggling with my Magical Readathon TBR this month, so I'm giving myself a lot of light, easy-to-read reads for the following month, kind of just to take the pressure off myself a little bit. For my next prompt, I rolled a 12, which is Autumn, and for that, she said that you can do anything that has a general Autumn vibe. She's not particularly picky on what that means, but her suggestions included something that was witchy or fall-themed or had, like, Autumn colors on the cover or copper foiling or anything along those lines. So I've given myself a couple of options for this just because I'm not really sure which way I'm going to go with it. But the first one is How to Succeed in Witchcraft by Ashlyn Brophy. This is an arc that I received in the mail in a video I put up a month or two ago. I'm not really sure how long it's been. I also have the e-arc of this and I was really, really excited to read it. I'm pretty sure that it's a queer 
magical academy kind of situation. I don't really know the specifics other than that, but I have been really excited to get to it ever since I received it. And so that's obviously How to Succeed in Witchcraft, witchy vibes for sure. The other book that I was thinking about picking up is called Coven. I'll pop a picture of it over here. I'm not particularly sure what the author's name is, but here. Uh, I received an e-arc of this as well, and it's like a witchy graphic novel. I think it's also queer, so it definitely falls under those same categories as How to Succeed in Witchcraft, and it kind of just depends on which way I'm feeling. I should probably should have prefaced this video, but if you've been around on this channel for any length of time, all of my TBRs have a little asterisk on them that I reserve the right to change anything at a moment's notice because I am a consummate mood reader. And so if any one of these doesn't fit the way that I am feeling at a particular time, I will probably change out the book that I have chosen for these. But this is a little guideline for me. I do like to start the month having these on the forefront of my mind so that I know kind of where I'm going with these prompts. But yeah, anyway, I reserve the right to change my mind off of either of these books or any of these books that I've mentioned so far, depending on how I'm feeling. For my next roll, I rolled a 7, which is a book written in third-person POV. I read a lot of fantasy, so this honestly has it pretty wide open to the majority of books that I have on my TBR. like very wide open. There's a lot of choices I could have made here. So I chose, again, two different picks for me that I might use from my ARC TBR. I have a lot of E-ARCs. Uh, you guys know that reading has been a little bit hard for me these last few months, so I'm definitely playing catch up on my ARC game. Uh, I've fallen way, way behind on the ARCs that I should have been reading over the last few months. And um, we're gonna try and read a couple of them during this readathon. So the first one that I chose was Blood Metal Bone. Again, I'll pop a picture up over here. I don't remember quite off the top of my head who the author is, but this is a, I think it's YA fantasy. I don't think it's adult fantasy. I opened it really quick to make sure that it was third person POV and uh, it was, so it falls under this category. If it's something that I open and I don't feel like reading, obviously I might change it up later, but this is the one that I've picked. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it is about, but there is the cover of it for you guys to peruse yourself. The other book that I was thinking about was called Dauntless. It's another one of the e-arcs that I have that I need to read, and I'm pretty sure that that is third person POV also. I'm pretty sure I checked, but now I'm doubting myself. But if it's not, obviously I won't use it for this prompt. But anyway, uh, so that's another one that, again, I don't quite recall what the plot is off the top of my head. I will make sure to link all of these books down in the description box so that you guys can check them out for yourself if any of this, well, not my description, obviously, but if the cover looks really interesting for you, then go check it out. Next I rolled a three, which led me to winter. And again, she said anything that gives off a general wintry vibe, something like a white cover or snowfall, or I think she said epic fantasy. I don't really get that, but it's Becca's guidelines. And so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, epic fantasy doesn't necessarily give me wintry vibes, but I'll, I'll go with it. I'm fine with that. Um, not that I actually use that for either of my picks. Again, I chose two books because I like to give myself options. So the first book that I chose is The Hitman by Katrina Jackson. This is a romance that I received in one of my Hello Lovely Trope of the Month boxes that I got recently, and it is a hitman bodyguard mafia romance. I'm pretty sure it's dark romance. I've heard that it's really good. I've heard a lot of good reviews about it, and I'm really, really interested in reading it. It's short, and it's hopefully going to be a fun, steamy time, and it is white, which fits the winter vibe. The other book that I chose for this prompt doesn't really need any introduction for you guys, but The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. Uh, this is the fairy loot edition with the beautiful stenciled edges. It's white-ish. It's off-white. It's cream. We'll go with cream. I'm counting that under the umbrella of that color family. And uh, this is a fantasy because I don't really have much in the way of like adult fantasy going on for this TBR so far. And I do generally like to sprinkle in one or two adult fantasy reads. So if I decide that this is something I would like to pick up instead of the Hitman this month, it is there as an available option, but again, I don't think it needs any introduction. This has been all over the Booktornet for the last, like, seven months, maybe? Um, but I will finally be joining the troops of people that have read it. Ever wonder what it would be like for someone on your side to be like? 
Now, as you may have noticed, when I rolled that 12 to get to the autumn square, it was double sixes, which means that I had to add a sixth book to the five rolls that I used for Bogoplathon. And the sixth roll gave me a nine, which once again led me back to TBR Vet. For this, I do have only one book picked out, but I mean, who's to say which direction I'm going to go with this? There's a lot of TBR Vets that I own probably some from my unhaul cart that I probably should have chosen in its place, but instead I went with Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is probably not the best choice for me because it's epic fantasy and it's large, but I've had, not this version, I did get this version recently, but I have had a copy of Assassin's Apprentice in my library for the better part of six or seven years now. It's been with me for a long time. It is time for me to finally jump onto the Robin Hobb train. I have caught up on my Sanderson, I have caught up on a lot of the big epic fantasies that I've wanted to. It's time for me to start with the world of Fitz, and I am very excited that I have this beautiful anniversary edition to read it from because the illustrations in this are absolutely gorgeous if you guys haven't seen those. So yeah, I would like to start reading Assassin's Apprentice this month. Send me all the good vibes because I don't necessarily know that this is going to be something for me. I've heard that her prose can be a little bit lyrical-y, which is not really my thing, but hopefully I'll enjoy it because I know that a lot of people do end up really, really loving the series when they didn't think they were going to. So Assassin's Apprentice is for sure on the list. And there you guys go. I ended up picking six books for this month. Uh, we will see how that goes because I think that I am going to end up treating the doubles roll, my final one, as like a if I get to it, great, if I don't get to it, eh, kind of a thing, because that's, uh, I, I, I'm struggling to reach the five books that I needed to reach for the current month for Magical Readathon. It's not really a slump, I've just been reading very slowly because I've been enjoying what I've been reading, I've just been taking my time with it. So yeah, we'll see how the month of September goes. Um, I would love to see all of your guys' TBRs for September and Becca's Bookoplathon. I hope that you all have a good reading month. I hope that we all have a good time because Becca's Bookoplathon is always really, really fun. But that's it for this one today, guys. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. Down in my description box, you're going to see links to my Goodreads, my Twitter, and my Instagram in case you guys wanted to follow me on any of those. But that's it for me today, guys. So I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye!